Nuclear weapons, with their lethal, precise, and destructive tremors, have proven their important position in modern warfare. They are designed for massive destruction and indirectly play a huge role in game global power and dominance. Recognizing the sheer magnitude of these nuclear weapons, the nation at the forefront is technical advancement has revealed that it is testing its new nuclear weapon that it had secretly developed. This announcement has left several nations unsettled as they begin to wonder, what are the capabilities of this new weapon? Can it wield so much power than the nuclear weapons previously developed? Join us as we delve into the explosive details of the new nuclear missile that the U.S. is presently testing. A nuclear weapon is a powerful explosive device that gets its destructive force from nuclear reactions, either splitting atoms or a mix of splitting and combining atoms. This results in a nuclear explosion, releasing a massive amount of energy from a small amount of substance in both types of bombs. The first test of an atomic bomb released energy of about 20,000 tons of TNT, while the first hydrogen bomb test released energy of about 10 million tons of TNT. These weapons are designed with different capacities and strengths. A small thermonuclear weapon that weighs over 600 pounds can release an energy that is equivalent to over 1.2 million tons of TNT. These deadly weapons have been deployed just twice in World War II, and both times was by the United States at Japan, towards the end of the war. On August 16, 1945, the U.S. dropped an uranium bomb named Little Boy over Hiroshima, and then three days after dropped another bomb called Fat Man on Nagasaki. The impact of these weapons led to several fatalities. Since the weapons were deployed in Japan, nuclear weapons gave been developed and tested over 2,000 times in record. Only a few countries have these weapons or are suspected of trying to get them. The known countries with nuclear weapons are the United States, Russia, the United Kingdom, China, India, and North Korea. Israel is thought to have nuclear weapons, but doesn't admit it. Germany, the Netherlands, and Belarus share nuclear weapons. After seeing the impact of nuclear weapons, the nuclear warfare strategy came into play. This strategy involves plans that would be put in place to avoid a nuclear war or handle it, if it ever happens again. It aims to prevent attacks by threatening to retaliate with nuclear weapons and to always be ready to respond to a nuclear attack and sometimes even try to have the ability to strike first by defaulting the Allies' nuclear forces before they can even react. During the Cold War, experts discussed and talked about policies that would help prevent nuclear attacks and as a result, created game theory models to ensure stable deterrence conditions. That being said, it is important to note that there are different ways of delivering nuclear weapons and this has led to versions of nuclear strategies. Despite the several strategies employed in the deployment of these weapons, the main goal remains to make it hard for an enemy to launch a surprise attack on the weapon system and challenging to defend against the weapon during a possible conflict. Some of these strategies include hiding weapon locations, like putting them on submarines or fighters with hard-to-track locations. It could also mean protecting these weapons by place in then in tough missile silos. Other parts of nuclear strategies include using defenses to destroy missiles before they land and also by using an early warning system to evacuate to safe areas before an attack. Now that the impact of a nuclear weapon has been discussed, let's go into details of the new nuclear weapon that the United States is testing and check out its terrifying capabilities. The LGM-30 Minuteman is a type of long-range missile that the Air Force Global Strike Command in the United States uses. In 2024, the LGM-30G is the only land-based missile like this in the country. It's part of the U.S. nuclear triad, which includes other weapons like the Trident II submarine-launched missile and nuclear bombs carried by big bombers. This weapon was created in the 1950s after research showed that a rocket with solid fuel could be ready to launch for a long time 
without needing fueling right before launch. This is different from liquid-fueled rockets that could be destroyed in a surprise attack because they needed fueling before launching. The missile got its name from the colonial Minutemen in the American Revolutionary War, who were ready to fight at short notice. It became operational in 1962 as a weapon to discourage others from attacking the U.S. It could hit Soviet cities if there was an attack on the U.S., and it could counterattack important military targets. When the United States Navy developed the UGM-27 Polaris for a similar role, the Air Force upgraded the Minuteman to make it more accurate. This upgrade allowed it to target hardened military sites like Soviet missile silos. The improved Minuteman II was put into service in 1965 with various enhancements to make it more accurate and survive against an anti-ballistic missile system that the Soviets were developing. In 9070, the Minuteman III became the first long-range missile with multiple warheads that could independently target different places. These three smaller warheads made it better at hitting targets protected by ABMs. Initially, they were equipped with the W-62 warhead, which had a yield of 170 kilotons. In the 1970s, there were 1,000 Minuteman missiles in use. But as of September 2017, there are only 400 Minuteman III missiles left. They are placed in missile silos near Malmstrom AFB in Montana, Minot AFB in North Dakota, and Francis E. Warren AFB in Wyoming. The Minuteman III will eventually be replaced by a new missile called the Ground-Based Strategic Deterrent. Northrop Grumman will start building it in 2030. It was mainly created because of Air Force Colonel Edward N. Hall, in 1965, he was in charge of the part of the Air Force that worked on rockets using solid fuel. This division was led by General Bernard Schriever and was responsible for developing the SM-65 Atlas and HGM-25A Titan I Intercontinental Ballistic Missiles or ICBMs. While solid fuels were already commonly used in short-range rockets, Hall believed they could also be used in a true ICBM with a long range of 5,500 nautical miles. Even though his superiors were more interested in shorter range missiles with solid fuel, especially for use in Europe, Hall was convinced it could work for a long range ICBM. In order to get the right amount of energy, Hall started funding research at Boeing and Theocol that year. They looked into using a special type of fuel called ammonium perchlorate composite propellant. They adapted an idea from the UK, casting the fuel into large cylinders with a star-shaped hole down the middle. This allowed the fuel to burn along the entire length of the cylinder, not just at the end like in earlier designs. This increased the speed at which it burned, which meant more thrust. It also spreads the heat across the whole motor instead of just at the end. Because it burned from the inside out, it didn't reach the wall of the missile until all the fuel was used up. In comparison, older designs burned from one end to the other, which meant that at any moment, a small section of the missile's wall was under extreme pressure and heat. The process of directing an intercontinental ballistic missile involves not only the missile's direction, but also noting the precise moment when the engine would stop working. If there is enough power, the warhead would travel faster and cover much distance to its target, in little time, but if the energy is low, the warhead would not reach its target. Predicting the burn time and the thrust of solid fuel can be quite challenging, and this is the major reason for the uncertainty in the accuracy needed to hit a distant target. This challenge was initially a very difficult problem to solve, but over time it was solved in a very basic way. A small opening was added inside the rocket nozzle that would open when the guidance system signaled to stop the engine. This sudden change in the pressure would cause the remaining fuel to break up and exit the nozzle without adding to the thrust. The first to use these new ideas was the U.S. Navy. They were working with the U.S. Army on a liquid-fueled missile called PGM-19 Jupiter, but they had doubts about it. The Navy thought that liquid fuels were too risky to use on ships, especially submarines. 
When the solid fuel program showed quick progress and Edward Teller promised lighter nuclear warheads during Project Nobska, the Navy decided to stop working on Jupiter and started making their own solid fuel missile. Aerojet, who was working with Hall, used these ideas for their UGM-27 Polaris missile starting in December 1956. This B-61 bomb is the main gravity bomb for the United States after the Cold War. It is a nuclear weapon with both high and moderate power that can be used for different military purposes. It also possesses a design that involves two stages of radiation implosion. It has a different yield design that is often referred to as dial a yield, which is an informal military term. It has a range of 0.3 to 340 kilotons in its different variants. This weapon is a full fusing option, weapon, and this means that it has various fusing and delivery opitons, which includes air and ground burst fixing and different ways of being dropped like a free fall, retarded free fall and lay down delivery. The B-61 is enclosed in a sleek casing that can handle high speed flight and is about 11 feet 8 inches long and a diameter of around 13 inches. It has a basic weight of about 700 pounds, though the vertical weight can vary depending on the version and the fuse retardation setup. As of 2020, the nuclear bomb was still undergoing its 12th modification. The Federation of American Scientists estimated in 2012 that each B-61s would cost $28 million per piece. It's because it is a versatile weapon that can adjust its lows and is designed for both tactical and strategic use and can be carried by fast aircraft. The bomb has a smooth outer shell that can handle high-speed flight. The original B-61-0 bomb was 141.6 inches long, 13.3 inches in diameter, and weighed 715 pounds. Later versions had similar dimensions and weight except from the Mod 11 version, which weighed around 1,200 pounds. The B-61 bomb is armed by ground-based personnel using the panel on its side. The panel opens to reveal nine dials, two sockets, and a T-handle that triggers the command disable function when it is pulled. The command disable mechanism works in a way that after entering the correct three-digit code, a dial is turned to DI and the T-shaped handle is pulled back. This motion releases a spring-loaded firing pin, which ignites the percussion cap on the thermal battery that's equipped in it and powers it up. The thermal battery provides enough electrical power to disable the bomb's internal circuitry without causing an explosion. This renders the bomb useless. If the command disable is activated, the B-61 must be sent back to Pantex for repairs. Also, the B-61 bomb can be set to explode in the air or on the ground. It can be dropped in different ways, free fall, retarded free fall, or laydown delivery. Only versions Mod 0 to 10 have a parachute retarder. This helps the aircraft get away from the blast in slow delivery modes, or it lets the bomb survive hitting the ground in laydown delivery. The pilot can also choose contact preclusion. The bomb can be released at speeds up to Mach 2 and as low as 50 feet in altitude. In one laydown mode, it explodes 31 seconds after release. The Mod 11 is a strong bomb meant for penetrating surfaces with a reinforced casing and a delayed action fuse. This allows the bomb to go several meters into the ground before exploding, causing damage to structures below the surface. Developed from 1994, the Mod 11 became active in 1997, replacing the older B-53 bomb with a megaton yield. About 50 Mod 11 bombs have been made, with their warheads changed from Mod 7 bombs. Currently, the primary aircraft for carrying the Mod 11 is the B-2 Spirit. Let's take a quick look at China's missile and its capacity. The Dongfeng Even is a short-range ballistic missile that can be moved or transported on roads. It was first developed in 1984 as the M-11. This project's development was led by China's Sanjiang Space Group. After several functionality tests, the missile became active in the PLA 2nd Artillery Corps in 1992. In the early 1990s, Pakistan secretly purchased this weapons system from China to bolster its defense system. 
However, it is important to note that the M11 can carry regular ammunition and are not equipped for nuclear use. In terms of agility, the missile can travel up to 300 kilometers with a payload of 800 kilograms, while its upgraded version, the DF-11A, can travel over a range of 825 kilometers. The M11's range does not break the rules that were set by the missile technology control regime, and also, unlike older Chinese missiles, this one makes use of solid fuel, which makes it quicker to launch. Other missiles, like the DF-5, which use liquid fuel, need up to two hours to get ready. There's also an upgraded version called DF-11B, and even a version called DR-11AZT, which is more accurate and can penetrate bunkers. Estimates suggest there are around 500 to 600 of these missiles in service. The launch vehicle is made by Wanshan Special Vehicle. This list would be incomplete without making mention of a particular nuclear bomb that made waves with its sheer strength and capabilities, the Tsar Bomba. Also known as the Tsar Bomb, this weapon is unrivaled in terms of capacity and capabilities. It got its name from a huge bomb created and tested by the Soviet Union. It was a modified version of a previous version, which was called the RN-202. It used a ballistic case, or the same dice, but had an extremely different internal mechanism. Some documents, including books written by people involved in the development of the RN-202, contain wrong information which identified the Tsar bomb as the RDS-202. The Tsar bomb was the most powerful weapon ever used on Earth. It also represents the largest nuclear bomb that was tested and the most significant human-made explosion in history. The most powerful weapon created by the United States, the now-retired B-41, was expected to have a maximum yield of 25 megatons, way lower than that of the Tsar bomb. Even the largest nuclear device that was tested by the United States, the Castle Bravo, yielded 15 megatons due to an unexpected high involvement of lithium-7 in the fusion reaction, while the initial prediction was 4 to 6 megatons. However, the weight and size of the Tsar bomb restricted the range and speed of the specifically modified bomber that was designed to carry it. Making use of an intercontinental ballistic missile would have needed a more powerful missile. Well, detonating the original 100 megatons designed was estimated to increase the world's total fission fallout since the invention of the atomic bomb by 25%. On October 30, 1961, the bomb was tested to check new design ideas for the creation of powerful nuclear bombs. The test confirmed that the creation of a nuclear device with unlimited power and capacity is very possible. They dropped the bomb from a 295V place with a parachute and set it off at about 4,000 meters above Sukhoi Nos Cape on Severny Island, Novato Zemlya, Bear Mityushika Bay, north of the Matochkin Strait. The essence of testing new designs of nuclear and thermonuclear ammunition is necessary to confirm their functionality, safety in emergencies, and the calculated energy release during an explosion. The bangmeter and other data suggested that the bomb produced around 58 megatons, which was the accepted amount in technical literature until 1991. That same year, the Soviet scientists shared that their instrument showed a yield of 50 megatons, and since that had the data and access to the test site, their yield figure was considered more accurate. The bomb would have yielded over 100 megatons if uranium-238 tamper was included in its design, but it was left out in its test to reduce radioactive fallout. Since only one bomb was fully built at the time, its capability has never been proven or even rivaled. After it was banned, the remaining bomb casing are at the Russian Atomic Weapon Museum in Sariv and the Museum of Nuclear Weapons at the All-Russian Scientific Institute of Technical Physics. In the mid-1950s, the U.S. had a clear advantage over the USSR in the creation of nuclear weapons, even though the USSR had developed thermonuclear charges. 
However, there was no effective way to deliver a nuclear warhead to the United States at that time. This simply explains why the Soviet Union could not launch a retaliatory nuclear strike against the U.S. As a result of the actual strategic disadvantage of the Soviet Union compared to the U.S. in nuclear weapons, the leaders at the time, Georgi Malenkov and Nikita Khrushchev, felt the need to respond to what they perceived as United States nuclear blackmail. Furthermore, in June 1960, a resolution was issued for the development of a super-heavy ballistic missile called N-1, which possesses a warhead weighing 75 tons. To put this into perspective, the warhead tested in 1964 by the UR-500 ICBM weighed 14 tons. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.